Hello, 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 everybody. Let me know if you can hear me. Loud and clear. Thank you, Stuart Cure. Good to see you. Good to see you, Tony Mule. Oh, hang on. Good speakers. Let me fix that. That's a nice little echo effect there. All right. Bruce scared his cat. Which one? He has many cats. There's a man of many skills, and then there's a man of many cats. Hey, Randy, good to see you, man. How are you? Glad you could join us. And we are going live in 37 seconds. So lots of regulars here. Good to see you all. And it uh, looks like people are coming in now. Just sent out the social media post, and uh, I guess you guys probably got the uh, email notification. 20 seconds we're gonna go live good to see you Russ good to see you Klaus Stan Kathy Stewart John Zach multimedia 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 blast off And hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, welcome to Life from Lockdown, episode number 76. So it's great to see you all. Um, had a week off last week. As you guys know, I was on vacation. So um, it was great to get a little bit of a break. You know how you are when you're just so like, Mwah. so much going on, you think you're going to pop. So fortunately, got a little break for a week. And I'm so happy to be back with you all this week. So I hope you guys are all doing good. I see most of you are here in the house, a lot of regulars here, and if you guys are first time visitors, say hi in the chat underneath, so it's good to see all of you guys. So why don't we just jump right into this thing, so I'm going to put my screen up here, and um, did I even hit the screen one? I think I did, yes, there we go, and let's look into what we're going to do, so it's going to be something a little bit different, and of course, you know, I'll give you guys all the instructions, directions, all that kind of stuff. So first of all, I want to introduce you to our moderator, the man of many cats and many guitars is Bruce Bicknell. He'll be here to take your drink orders, take care of all your issues, put your seat backs uh, back for you and help you to generally have a very happy time here. Um, so, <laughs> and here we go. So Rod Shelley, your Bruce, uh, Bruce's fan uh, fan. Club here is saying hello. Got some sun and lusters. Razor, yeah, I got some sun. And maybe it's just bad white balance. Who knows? Um, but, you know, hey, you should never shave, you know, within a week of coming back from a vacation. Uh, anyway, guys, so <laughs> it's good to see you all. So what we're going to do here, uh, Robin says she likes my scruff. Well, thanks for that. Oh, and Rod Shelley says thank you for that 20% gray tip. Uh, if you guys uh, don't know, and uh, thank you, Stuart, for the happy birthday wish. Wow, okay, so that's what happens when you look at the chat. You get distracted, but it doesn't matter because it's all about you guys. So anyway, um, yes, um, I did drop a tutorial this Tuesday about um, rather than using flow and opacity for masking to use um, percentages of gray. So check that out um, You know, after this, of course, it's there on the YouTube channel. And also all the written steps are on Photoshop Cafe. So whenever I do a live tutorial, to tutorial um, not the live stream because it's it's too much but I actually do the written steps for the weekly tutorial so every Tuesday I drop a short tutorial and then every Thursday we're here live so if you guys are wondering what's happening if you're late welcome don't worry you haven't missed anything yet and um, if you're what part of the replay crew meaning that you don't see that live stream and you're not here between 1 and 2 p.m. Pacific time you are part of the replay crew drop your comments underneath and uh, speaking of that if you're watching live and you miss something the replay will be live directly after this Whew. okay all of that and I'm talking to the camera and all you can see is the screen anyway so that was uh, all exciting okay so what we're doing this week as I thought we would do something fun, um, collaborating with a friend of mine. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Fawn Wong. 
a good friend of Photoshop Cafe. In fact, he did a training video with us. Um, introduction to Cinematic Portraiture or Cinematic... I think it was Introduction to Cinematic Portraiture. Let's see if we can bring that up. Uh, hang on. Let me bring that up right now. And he does these epic shoots. He's kind of known for these epic shoots. And let me just bring it up um, so I can show you. And um, here we go. Let's bring this up bring it up right now and yeah this is what he yeah, I, some of you may be familiar with this title that we did this with him a few years ago now went out in location did all these shoots and he's not for these kind of epic shoots like these underwater shoots and different things like that so we you know we had we had a really good time kind of deconstructing von wong for all of you guys so Right now he's doing a thing, um, an installation. He built this huge installation. It was like so many stories tall. And he actually built this. He got a group of volunteers and they literally built this giant tab. And um, let me get to the page because there is actually a page. Bruce, can you post a link to that? Um, and the reason I say that is because you guys can actually be involved in this um, compositing. And uh, we're going to create a composite right now today from scratch, but uh, here's the here's the rules and everything for what he's doing. So here's some different composites that people have done uh, based on his um, tab. So he actually built this and moved it in a truck, went to different locations and shot it. And these are some remixes that different people have done with this. So it's a lot of things we can do. It's kind of uh, fun. And these are some of my friends. Uh, there's Jesus Ramirez. Of a gross, um, different people here. There we go, doing theirs, and of course Karen Olsop, another friend of Photoshop Cafe and friend of mine, and different things. So I figured you guys can actually create one of these yourself. So you will get um, access to the. Uh, I'll give you guys links, and I think Bruce, did you drop that link yet? Let's have a look. Let me drop it in here. Boom, right there. And, um, you know, you can check that out afterwards. And that's where you can download these assets, like these extracted, you know, plastic in the taps and stuff like that. And build your own composite. And he's actually giving away prizes. We are doing um, some prizes in Photoshop Cafe training. Um, and also there's a whole bunch of prizes there, 1000 or 10000 I think $10,000 of her prizes there. So, you know, check all that out. So what we're going to do, though, today is we're going to build something. And I just went and grabbed some different backgrounds and uh, different things like that. And we're going to figure out, hey, what are we going to do? Let's collaborate together like you and me right now and come up the composite. Let me just, I just want to find one other thing. Um, let me just show you what, um, what Von Wong or Ben Van Wong did. Um, on long just googling it right now getting this ready yeah so bruce has the um the links there which is fine it's, that's all we really needed bruce was the uh, links to the assets so this is a page that he created and the, like literally there's a behind the scenes where he actually built this thing you know with a team of volunteers and actually built this giant tap and you can kind of see how it did and these are some of the composites that have been done. And of course, you can contribute your composites, sponsors, you know, BenQ, welcome. So there's prizes from everybody here. You guys can be all the volunteers that were involved in this to build this. Um, and I'm just trying to show you. Here we go. So these are the actual photos that he took. So he actually took this to the beach and constructed this and had all these models, you know, dancers, you know, creating these different types of things. And, you know, there's a little bit behind the scenes. So there's another shot he did at playground. And uh, another one here, so on and so forth. So this was actually built. It was not just, you know, a 3D model or anything like that. So I say kudos to him because uh, I'm not on the camera right now there, uh, just Jason. Uh, but let me pop myself in the corner. How's that? Yeah. How are you guys? All right. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that so you know what that's all about, blah, blah, blah. And um, so why don't we see what we can create today? So I just grabbed some images and I'm looking for your guys input. What do you think would be a good idea for a background? Drop it into the chat. 
and um, and let's have a look and see what I've kind of put together. So we're under the window here and um, make sure we're in Photoshop. It works better under the window and we're going to arrange and let's do a six up and see some of the ideas that I have. Now, you guys might have better ideas. And if that's the case, we'll go with your ideas. So let's see what we got here. So I grabbed, you know, some I thought maybe something like an airport might be cool. So I've got a couple of, you know, planes here. Um, you know, we could drop these into an airport. Might be fun. Concert could be fun. You know, just driving through the countryside. So the idea is to create this giant, you know, monolith um, plastic tap. And we're going to composite into these environments. Or, you know, not, obviously not all of them. but So here's some ideas I have of some environments. And, of course, you know, as I say, if you guys have got better ideas, drop your ideas in there. A hot volcano. Okay. A NASA launch pad. Okay. There we go. We've got some good ones. I like these. Keep them coming, guys. Keep them coming. And what else we got going here? I did a... Um, this is just kind of driving. We could do a corn field. You know. A la Star Trek. Maybe not so exciting. We could do a, a scene here. Let me just keep showing you guys what I have. What else? Volcano, NASA, snowstorm, dinosaurs. Grab one of those Mars images from NASA. That would be awesome. All right, cool. Monolith. 20, 2001 monolith. All right. Grand Canyon, thunderstorm, pouring trash either in or out of the U.S. Capitol building. An oil well. Um, yeah, let's, okay, we've got some good ideas here. I like these ideas. Um, Randy, I'm glad you said dinosaurs because I kind of had a thought about that myself. Now, of course, and just to prove that, it's kind of funny, great minds, right? I literally, look, I was just looking up dinosaurs right before you um, posted that. So look at that. Yeah, so um, these are some different ideas. I have no idea how we would do this. Um, Linville Viaduct, not sure about that. Puppy Field, I don't I don't know what the Linville Viaduct is. Maybe I should look it up. An old oil pump. Apes contemplating plastics. Yeah, that's right, Randy. Gray mines. Um, so I'm just, you know, of course we want to do something that we have images of. We'll make it, oh, that's kind of cool. So I'm just looking here. This is our free stock search pro. So these are the, you know, the free stock I could find. So let's let's do something. I mean, we could get very crazy here, but the, of course the challenge is going to be finding photos. So I've already got some of those. Space, okay. Godzilla versus. Ooh, that's a good idea. I like that too. Uh, Blue Heron Parkway. Blue Ridge Parkway. Okay, so we got some places here, guys. I haven't heard of. I'm feeling a little embarrassed now. Let's let's look these up. Let's look up the first one that you guys said. Linville Viaduct. What is Linville Viaduct? Let's have a look. This is a Blue Ridge Parkway. Is this the same one? Ah, I guess it is. Um, blue good. Oh, that's cool. I like that. I like that a lot. That's that's a very nice possibility if we can find a stock version of it. That would actually be really good. I just I'm not going to be violating copyrights. So let's see what they got. Let's see if the free stock search has got any. And if not, there's other places we can look. But let's try this one. Oh, why did I put that Dropbox thing in here? Let's, my apologies. Can't cut and paste, apparently. Let's go here. That was the link to do the thing. Okay, what do we got here? Linville Viaduct. <laughs> Looks like we got some viaducts here. Aha, there it is. The Linville Viaduct. Is that what this was? The picture on the left, guys. Let me know if that's the case. I'm, I don't necessarily always know, but this looks this looks kind of cool. All right, that's a good possibility. Smash the like button. All right, the apes looking at the monolith, like the bottle monolith from the movie. Wow. Okay, that, I like that idea too. That's a very, very good idea. Let's see what we've got in the area of apes too, because we got to make sure we have things to work with. Um, okay, looks like we could... Oh, we've definitely got some apes we can work with here. Yeah. All right, so I think we're in good shape. 
So what do we got for monolith? Let's have a look at the 2001 monolith and see what it looks like. I think I should do all my compositing with you guys because you've got so many awesome ideas. Oh, remember this monolith? Here we go, monolith images. All right, so where would we find this? Whew. Um, it's going to be some canyon. Do you guys know which canyon that was? Where we could find that monolith? I'm open to suggestions for that. But let's grab some apes that we could cut out. Obviously, you know, with the time allotted to us, we're not going to create, you know, a stunning, you know, really complex piece of work. But we could, these guys look good. They look fun. I'm just going to grab a few. So this is what I'm doing. So by the way, guys, this, to find images. So this is literally the process of, you know, let's put the lesson in here. The process of creating a composite, first of all, is brainstorming the idea, which is what we're doing here right now. So this is what we're doing. Make the car scene film noir. That's a cool idea. Space. Okay, so we've got lots and lots of ideas. So the first idea is to say, okay, what is it we're going to do? Brainstorm, get some ideas. Then the second thing is we want to grab some assets to work with, which is what we're doing here. I'm just grabbing some apes. You know, we well these you know these apes are not even the same. So clearly we're not trying to perfectly re reproduce uh, 2001. But let's just grab a few different apes, a few different monkeys, apes. Let's grab them all here. And what I'm doing is I'm just opening them. Oh, by the way, I was telling you guys this. Um, this is the free Stock Search Pro. I think I've told you guys about this before, but basically we are going to um, choose the find extensions on Exchange, and under there there's a free Stock Search. So it's it's free, and if you want the pro version, I don't know, it's like ten bucks or thirty bucks. And it takes the advertising out and then it looks at places like Pixbay, Unsplash, and enables you to browse directly from within Photoshop and find some different um, free stock images that you are able to use. All right, so we've got some good ones there of some apes. That's good. So why don't we have a look here? I probably should have done monkey. And now maybe get stuff to be a little bit less baboon. Well, that's kind of a cool one. I'm going to grab that anyway, even though not really fitting with the theme but hey bruce that would be his pet if bruce had a if bruce was a monkey this would be bruce all right so let's keep going all right so let's grab this guy he looks curious all right so this is what we're doing is i already got it so i guess i really liked it grabbed it twice all right so we need something for backdrop a backdrop so i don't i don't know i kind of like the monolith idea but i also feel like why don't we combine some stuff and make it fun i want to use the runway the airplane here so why don't we close this out and why don't we combine an airport with some apes some monkeys and um, you know maybe put an elephant in there sure why not and then we're going to do that all right so let's work right click and consolidate all to, to tabs like that and let's go here and what I want to do is just trim this to the size of that. So we're going to choose image and we're just going to trim and that'll get rid of the transparency pixels. Awesome. All right. So maybe this is going to work for backdrop. I say maybe because maybe it won't, but let's find out. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to grab some of these assets. So I'm going to choose file and we're going to place these in here. Let's place embedded. And now here's the plastic tap uh, assets that you guys can grab. We already gave you the link. And I'd love to see what you guys are going to do with your own. So I'm going to create one now. We'll create this together. And then maybe you guys can create your own at some point. And uh, let's see. Let's try some different ones. I think this one here might work good. So these are already isolated. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's going to work perfectly. See that? So we've got this isolated uh, tap here. It's coming out of the sky in front of the airplane. Oh, wow, look at that. We're done already. Looks great. Okay, let's go a little bigger. And so what we're doing now is the next phase of the composite. You know what? I think I just kind of liked how it was. So the next phase of the composite is we're just doing a rough assembly now. 
So we're kind of saying, okay, what what are the components we're going to use in here? I like this. I think this is going to work. Obviously, we're going to do shadows and stuff and and make it all match. Um, you know, we've got you know color, all that stuff. We'll get to all that. All right, so let's go through and maybe we're going to grab some of these apes. So how are you guys feeling about this? You feel like we're onto a good, uh, we've got a good concept now? <laughs> Bruce loves that remark. Yes. Uh, what does it say there? Um, huge aircraft skimming away from the wave. That sounds good too. There are a couple of free 2001 monoliths at Adobe Stock. Really? Okay. Well, let's, let's have a quick look at those just in case it's something we want to use. Let me go to Adobe Stock. Let's type that in. And um, another place that you can get free images is if you go to Adobe Stock here. And under all, we can go down to free. And let's do monolith. I can't spell. Let's do TH monolith. And we'll put an O in there. Don't you guys love my spelling? All right, so here we go. It's monolith. All right, so we got some cool. There's... Um, Stonehenge. Ooh, that's kind of cool too. What do we got? You know, I don't know. Let's just, let's grab this. So what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing Stonehenge here. This might be just totally ridiculous and um, unnecessary, but which has absolutely nothing to do with, you know, the space odyssey now that I think about it. But let's just drag that into Photoshop. And if you guys are on a new version of uh, the Apple operating system, that's how you do it. Okay, so let's do the 2001 monolith and see what we get. All right, so these are definitely very monolithic, but yeah, let's go for what we've got. All right, so maybe we could drop this in. I don't know if this is even going to be... Some we're going to use. Um, we're not going to use that one. Let's pop it in here. So we're not going to use the concept. Boo. Maybe we can come back to it. Probably won't use the elephant. Ah, hang on. Let me, I don't know. We might use the elephant. So I was just thinking about dropping that and like maybe we could have it. You know, we'll put this on here just as a separate layer. Maybe we could have it kind of peeking through. Maybe we'll use that. Maybe we won't. Um, and let's get to our apes. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is just make this way bigger. So I've got room to play with. Let's grab all the different layers and just drag those out there. And what we're going to do is just do a quick select subject on all of these. Because I just want to just... just we don't, we don't have to be perfect. Let's just do a quick kind of a rough... Actually, you know, let's be good and use masks. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing a quick extraction of these. So just grab that, select subject, create a mask. Now, of course, you guys, you know, when you don't have limited time, you're going to do a much better job of this yourself. Um, how big is that? Oh, these are huge. Okay, so we're going to be good for size. So what I'm doing is I'm just choosing select subject and then just masking these quickly, one at a time. Select subject. Don't you love select subject? It may not give a perfect cutout, but it's going to give you good enough to just kind of stage things because this is the stage that we're at right now of the um, composite is we're at the staging place where we're just moving things into position to see what might work and what might not work and uh, okay that looks great got all of those and you know what it'll be this will be good enough for us to visualize and then if we want to clean them up later you know because we've got them in masks we can go into those masks later and uh and clean these up all right so we're not going to use that one now that was a good idea though it was a great idea um so let's go here can i drag hidden things i think i can yes you can you can drag hidden layers good to know okay let's close these out guess we're not going to be using these now and then bruce is saying warren Oh, make the elephant trunk the force. Yeah, you know, that's a brilliant idea. I think that's a very good idea. But I think part of the contest that they're doing 
is that we have to use you know the assets they've given us um, but you probably could I, I still think it's a great idea all right so let's have a look here and we can see what we can do with some of these apes so what I want to do is resize them so let's just go through here wow these are huge apes very very huge so why don't we speed up I'm just gonna select them all and hit control T well actually I think I have to make them visible let's make them visible first hit control T and now what I'm gonna do is hit control zero control T turns on free transform control zero enables me to see these adjustment handles and I'm just gonna shrink these down a little bit and the nice thing is because they're smart objects if I make them too small it doesn't matter I can make them larger later and not lose any quality but I just want to make them small enough so we can actually fit them on the screen and see what's going on great all right all right let's do some auditioning let's figure out who we want we definitely got to have this guy he is a keeper not bad even where he is let's see what else we're gonna do here this guy's definitely a keeper you know this is our uh, our timekeeper oh no what a terrible joke terrible joke okay so he's gonna be in there this guy's gonna be yeah we definitely want both of those guys definitely um yep most definitely why don't we just kind of pop him over here somewhere um is that the same one yeah i think we doubled that one up we don't need that one twice okay this guy yep yeah, oh definitely look at that expression i mean you know with the baby definitely having that one definitely having that okay these ones may or may not work maybe for like put them in the edge and like make them small you know what they may work in just kind of like background kind of you know because we're looking to fill it out so maybe we'll do something with them and what else we got here this guy most definitely he's got to be in it all right so let's see what we've got let's turn on our monkeys all right so we're starting to build something now monkey kong monkey kong all right let's have a look here so i think the guy here needs to go back because this well i don't know let's see what happens if we make this guy a little smaller Who do you think should be the main guy? Anyone know who they think should be the main guy? Oh, thank you, uh, P. Steelman. Said, love the... I'm thinking the dude on the guitar. Uh, you know, just... I'm biased. I like guitars. I know Bruce likes guitars. So when you... Another thing, when building a composition, what you're looking for is not everything can be the focus of attention so you're looking for something that is you know it needs a meek rate you're not you're not wrong there rod you're completely right um so maybe this guy on the guitar might be a good uh, hero so what if we just go huge like too big all right so we got this you know what it's good if i was building a, some kind of a poster i kind of like this composition wise but now we're losing the focus and the focus is supposed to be this tap what if we make the tap bigger now all right so let's start to build this composition So this is our main guy. What do you guys think? Let's see what you think. The gray baboon would look good on top of the plane. All right. I like that. This guy here. So we're going to put him on top of the plane. All right. Actually, why don't we make two of them? Because no one will know. Sometimes you can double up. I'm going to hide the guitar dude just for a second. And let's... Well, take one of these make a smaller one put them on top of the plane all right I like that let's flip them uh, 
All right, so we're gonna have this guy on top of the plane at some point. We, we'll work on, you know, blending these. So what we're doing right now is we're in a composition stage, just kind of sketching. We're basically, we're kit bashing, we're sketching. We're just kind of just seeing, hey, what might work, what might not work. And we will start to do the uh, stuff. Light is on the wrong side. Don't worry about all of that yet. We're just throwing stuff together at the moment. But thank you for bringing up Sherry. Um, good to see you, by the way. All right, so let's just throw things together here. Um, this guy, what are we going to do with this guy? I don't know if I want that big silver back there. Let's put him over to the edge. This guy's so cute, he needs to be, I think he's going to be right here in this pile here. And I think that's what gave you the idea for the meat rat, right? All right, so why don't we start, I'm going to start compositing this, this little chap in here, because I, I think he's cool. It's fun. It's got a great expression. And um, so what we want to do is we've got all this stuff. So I want to put them behind that. So I'm going to hit control and click. And what that's going to do is it's going to load the selection for all this stuff. And then that's going to help me uh, to just kind of mask this guy out a little bit. So let's just grab a brush. And let's just start to you know just kind of let that garbage kind of come through the front there we go control d so what we're doing is we're just getting him you know just in position in 3d space all right so let's let's have a look and let's identify our lighting i guess it's a good time to think about it so if we're looking at our top here let's have a look let's see what we've got our light is coming from the left hand side and top and it's hitting now let's look at a plane looks like our light you know it's kind of well I mean there's the light thing over here isn't there we've got light coming from the other side and it's lower much lower okay so let's say control T I'm gonna flip this so okay so we're gonna we're gonna have to change some things So you were right, Sherry. Um, let's have a look here. Okay, so this guy here looks like we've got light coming from that side. So he's okay up here, but on that side there, he's not. We can maybe get away if there's some dodging and burning. And this little guy here still seems to sort of fit in there. Yep, he still fits in there nicely. Okay, great. Because we haven't changed the tap looking good all right it's looking nice okay let's just grab our next characters so these guys I like the way the mother's grabbing her child so let's make this a little smaller just kind of getting things into position and maybe we can get them in here into this little pile so let's control click we're making loading that selection and I'm gonna have to start naming these so put child in there so we know which one it is grab the brush all right what are we gonna do here let's zoom in a little bit I think we can do something with this grab the brush I kind of like how some of these, how they are sort of sitting on top of this garbage might actually work. What am I doing here? There we go. And let's paint with black. And let's see what we can do about trying to just kind of build these into the environment a little bit. I need a harder brush. Brush is too soft. All right. See what I can do. Let's put that behind there. Maybe a little bit on top. There we go. I really like that tail there though. So maybe we'll just let that tail go over the top of it. That's what we wanted. There we go. A little bit of that bottle. We need that bottle in front. There we go. So we're just kind of putting them in there. 
and maybe that little bit there goes out. Nah, we're gonna have to lose the tail. It just doesn't make sense. Now we could go through. We'll clean this up later. All right. So same thing with this guy, the big guy. What do we got here? We've got that group. I don't know if that group is going to work. I like them. I think they're super cool, but I don't think they're going to work. And I think this guy can just sit right on top of the garbage. All right. So how do we do? Here's a good lesson for us. How do we know what we want to mask out here? And let's do the uh, bashful because he looks bashful to me. And we'll match. So what we're doing now is we're starting to integrate. So we're into the next phase. So the first phase was to brainstorm. The second phase was to just kind of start to place some things, which we're sort of in that phase. But now we're starting to just loosely integrate them into the environment. So, you know, we've still got to fix, you know, color of all those stuff. We'll get to that. So we're just kind of building our composition now. So maybe we'll put this little chappy here. I, so here's here's something that's going to be useful for you guys. I'm calling him bashful because he seems bashful, doesn't he? Like, oh, shucks, that's what he's saying. And we want to know what are we integrating? So how do we see what's going behind here? I know some people like to reduce the opacity. But let me show you something interesting, and it should work here, is if we go down and then we use our difference mode. Is that working on here? Sort of working. Not really working good for this one. Okay, so we'll try a different mode. So what I'm looking for here is a blend mode that is going to enable me to see both the monkey and the background. You know what? That is going to work. I'm going to use screen mode. And the reason for that is I can see in there and I can start to paint these. So I'm seeing them both at the same time. Often I'll use a difference mode for that. But I guess in this case, it's just not going to work. So this is good. This is going to let me see these kind of areas. So we're just going to do this loosely, just kind of painting them in and just finding areas, you know, like those bottles where we can start to create an integration and pop our ape in there. All right, let's go and go to normal mode and there we go see that kind of helped of course we'll go and we'll refine that later but uh, there's another use for blending modes you don't necessarily always have to use blending modes you know for a final effect they're great tools for working um so i think we're starting to get somewhere now so what do you guys think we're starting to have some some fun with this looks like the little guy's having a smoke <laughs> all right that's funny he does. All right, we're getting there, huh? This guy at the top is still too big, and he kind of disturbs me a little bit. Just, you know, it's fun to put him up there, but don't know that it's realistic. There we go. That might be a little bit more realistic as far as size. Still going to be huge, like King Kong sized. All right, and why don't we... We might not be done with those guys yet, but we'll come back to that. And then, of course, we've got the big dude on guitar. Just kind of makes it fun. Now, I'm going to make this guy, pardon me, a lot smaller. I did like him as the main character. Um, but I feel like... We need to drop the size down because otherwise it just becomes all about him and not so much about the the plastic rat tap. All right, so let's see what we can do about blending him into the environment. Let me go to some different blend modes. Let's do difference mode. Is that going to work? You know what? I'm going to go to divide mode and that makes it... Well, actually, it's hard. I can't, I, that doesn't work. Let's go to subtract. So I can see it. Notice what it's doing. It's allowing me to see the outline of our object, plus it allows me to see everything here. So I want to have that kind of makes it easier to work with. So let's grab our brush. And now we're going to paint over the front here. Let's get them integrating into the plastic cup. And of course, you know, we'll come back later and make all this, you know, nice and perfect. Well, as perfect as we're going to have time for. 
And so what am I, am I doing here? I'm just looking for somewhere that I can use to separate from the foreground. Just somewhere that just naturally is going to create a nice separation. So I'm thinking here maybe. Make sure that can. Maybe that's where we're going to cut that. I don't even know what that is, but let's just go through there. Cut that. Cut this. And maybe this is going to give us what we want. Let's go back to normal mode. There we go. It's giving us a good starting spot there. Try the guitar on the wing. Yeah, that, that could be fun. Um, let me see. What is he doing for that? Well, if we put him on the wing, though, he's going to be pretty small and he's going to get lost. I kind of like this guy a little bit more forward. Now, he's going to be a challenge to work with because the tonality on this one is much darker than everything else. So I'm just going to hit Control G and I'm going to put it into Group. And see what we can do if we can reduce this without losing too much integrity. If the image starts to fall apart, um, it won't work. But why don't we grab some curves and see what we can do. So I'm going to just grab, clip that. So this is only going to affect that and nothing else. And let's see what we can do. Let's reduce the contrast a little bit. So I'm going to take the blacks. I'm just going to drop them down. All right, so maybe that's a good starting place. You know, I'm not trying to get everything perfect at the moment, but I'm just trying to see, okay, is this going to match? Now, I'm not really liking the silhouette with the monkey behind. I feel like that guitar is kind of cutting into it. Um... Put someone on top of the control pad, control tower. That's a good idea. Um, you know what we could do? I just got an idea. We don't just have to have one plastic tap. We can have more. So why don't we go and I'm going to choose file. And I'm going to place embedded. Let's grab another plastic tap. Why just have one? And we can have more. Look at that. Let's put that one back here. There we go. Now we've got a couple. What do you guys think? Does that help? Yeah, I think why not, right? Why not? If one is good, two is better. And what I'm going to do is have a nice spot there. And why don't we create another one? And we're going to put this way off into the distance. So someone's idea there of putting this on the tower is what actually gave me the idea of, oh, if we can put that on the tower, then why don't we create more of them off in the distance? So thank you for that idea. And we're going to hit enter. Guitar is blocking the baby. Yeah, we can see that. I'm not sure the guitar, I love the guitar, but I'm not sure it's working. Um... Maybe the idea of putting it on the wing might be the solution. So what we want to do is make this look really huge. So I'm going to put it behind the wing of the airplane. So let's go to the airplane. Now, here's a little trick. If you want to, you know, see how we've got some layers are hidden and some aren't. I want to preview the background on its own, but I want to remember the visibility. So rather than right clicking and choosing show hide all other layers or anything like that, hold down the alter the option key, click, hides everything but our airplane. And now I can zoom in here, grab our selection tool. Let's grab something like a, let's just choose a polygon layer. So I'm just going to go super simple with this. And uh, I'm not going to overthink it. Okay, guys. So don't expect this to be perfect. I just want to get the wing selected. And then I'm going to hit control J, drop that on top. And now if I Alt Option click back, oh, I shouldn't have created that new layer. That might have made it impossible for me to remember. Okay, so there we go. Alt or Option, click on there, and it brings back all the other layers. Don't create a new layer until then. Now I can create a new layer. So we've got this. Let's drag the wing up above there. And so what we want to do is have that wing just above that one. Let's get these in the right order. That one goes behind. That one goes in front. And there we go. So now what we've done is we put that wing so you can see how it's kind of integrated in there. I think you guys saw how I did that. All right, cool.
All right, so how are we doing for time? 143. Okay, I think it's time to start bringing this together. Now, remember, of course, we would go in and do more of, um, you know, refining these selections and making these selections a lot better. Of course, you know, we just don't necessarily have the time to do all that. But let's see what we can do. Let's grab this one little guy here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the layer mask. So what we've done is we've selected him right now. And I am just going to delete that layer mask. Just disable it. Okay, there we go. And then what we're going to do here is with that guy selected. Oh, we need to rasterize it. Let me just hit control J. I'm just making a copy. Hang on a sec, guys. Let me just do this a different way. Um, double click. We're going to go into the smart object. There we go. And let's just select them this way. This will be better. So what I'm doing now is I'm working on this one individually and we're going to use select and mask. And let's see if we can get a better edge on here than what we have there. So let's look at it on white. Grab our little refine brush. I could use refine here. Actually, that's not bad. That worked quite well. See what it did on the head. It was quite nice. And then I'm just going over the edges here with the refine brush. See if we can get this a little better. Now we're not going to get this perfect with the time that we have, but I just want to show you the techniques that you guys could, you know, use yourself. And here's something I'm finding about for this fur. When you see this refine brush, I'm getting a good result. But if I start mostly inside and go on the outside, it doesn't do a good job. See that? So one of the things I just figured out by just random experimentation is if you take this brush mostly on the outside of the edge, look at this, it gives you a much, much better selection. So that's a new tip, something I just literally was just fooling around and just realized. In fact, I think it was when I was creating a session for my Adobe Max session, I figured this out. Look at that. So now we're getting a better cutout around there of the fur. And remember what I'm doing here, I'm just doing this one ape but this is what we would do for, you know, for all the monkeys, you know, to get um, all the apes. Sorry, I, how dare I call them monkeys. They're not all monkeys, different types of apes. All right, so see how we're doing that. We're getting a better job. And what we're going to do is we're going to output this to a new layer of a layer mask. Click OK. Awesome. Let's save this. It's going to update on our main document because we're using the smart object. Control D, turn that off. And now we can ditch this layer mask. Let's um, delete the layer mask. We don't need it. And why did that not update? Can't save it back to its original format, flatten layer. Ah, oh, they want me to flatten it. Okay, so I'll just drag it in. No big deal. Let's just drag it in. Here we go. And let's make it fit. And you can see we're getting a, a better cut up. There we go. So generally speaking, that's what I would do is I would start just by staging things and then you're going to go in and start to refine things and make them better. Now, this is where I can use difference mode. So if I go to the difference mode, it makes it easy to rescale things. See that if I want to line them up and get them to match, makes it very, very easy. And in fact, when everything turns black, is when I'm exactly on it. He looks a little bit like Yoda, doesn't he? Um, so let's go back to regular blending mode, normal. Hide that background. There we go. And where's that mask? Did I delete the mask? Of course I did. That's what I love about doing these live. All right, no big deal. We're just going to do the same thing we did before. Let's just mask out the, the background. So let me change this mode to something I can see everything. Grab a brush, very quick and easy. So this time I'm going to change this hardness to be a little bit softer. And let's get these guys going in here. I'm just going to go over. Just the areas we want to keep. 
go back to regular mode normal there we go and see how it's starting to look a little bit better not quite happy with where that is cutting though so you just got to keep just kind of playing around until you I didn't mean that to move so much maybe cut there see what we're doing there we go all right so we're just kind of dropping this little guy in here maybe that's a good place to cut it just looking for that spot there's just going to be these natural areas that are just going to look like okay that's the way we should cut them all right so see how it's starting to look a little bit better so you would go over this yourself and you would refine these and i will do this on my own you know without you guys having to sit there and watch now i think in the guy with the guitar might still work taking somebody else's suggestion and maybe putting them on the wing let's have a look Yeah, see, he might work on the wing there. Or, you know what? Maybe he'll work on top. Forget this one. Let's get rid of that guy. Put this guy on top. There we go. There we go. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? All right, let's mask this guy up. <laughs> and by the way, guys, if you're getting any value out of this, if you're enjoying it or anything like that, do me a favor. Hit that like button. It helps us with the algorithm on YouTube. And um, now this is a good place to use things like select subject. Watch this. Right click, grab the plane. Now, once again, Alt or Option, click that eyeball. Now we see just the plane. Grab that. Choose select subject. That'll make a selection. Alt Option back takes us back to the layers. And now we get that selection. And we can use that selection to help us mask out and get a guy right there on the plane control d see that so you don't have to like have perfect brush skills now let me go back to that because i noticed on some of these i went over come on shift i and grab the brush and i just want to paint back some guy some areas hit the x key oh too far all right so this is going to require a little bit of skill here I'm just going to paint it because I, you know, you could make selections um, if you want. If you've got a steady enough hand, sometimes just painting it in works like we did there. Awesome. I think this is starting to come together. What do you think, guys? Now what we need to do is we need to match the tones of this. Um, and let me just save this just in case the machine crashes, which of course it never does. But let's just drop this onto the desktop. And we're going to call this uh, Stop the Tap. Uh, PT Smith. I'll just put my name on it. Okay. All right. So now we want to balance the tones and see if we can get our tonalities the same. All right. So what we want to do, the easy way that I like to do this is to use helper layers. And I'm going to create a helper layer, black and white. So we're just going to go under the adjustment layer. We're going to choose black and white. And then it's going to create a black and white layer. Drag it all the way to the top. And see what it does is it removes the color. And now this enables us to get a better indication of our tones. Are our tones matching or our tones not matching? All right, so let's just go in here too. I'm going to select these and hit Control G. And we're going to do uh, taps. Now we're going to call this one BG for background. Okay, this is stuff I should have done earlier on. But we're just doing a little bit of, um, we don't need the that anymore let's go in here Control g we're going to call these one apes so this is uh, some organization basic organization here guys okay so let's hide the, the apes and let's just look at the overall image here how are we looking for tonality i feel like maybe these plastic taps are a little bit light but let's have a look do we like the light on those or do we prefer the dark on the image now obviously the image is darker because of the time of day what do you guys like? Do you guys like it? Should we lighten? Should we darken the taps in the garbage or should we lighten the airplane? 
Oh, that sounds like a good concept. All right, so I think I'm going to do that. Let's go under here. We're going to take the tabs and we're going to darken these a little bit. So let's create an adjustment layer. And we're going to use curves. Lighten the plane. Okay, let's do a little bit of both. So I'm going to take this in here and I'm going to make sure that this is set to normal and not pass through. So we can just affect these with the curve. Otherwise, it would be, see how it's just going to affect them. If I had that set to pass through, uh, where's pass through, wherever it was. Um, oh, why am I at the top there, not the blend mode, duh, the blend mode of that. If I was at the pass through, this is what would happen. If I went to make the adjustment, see, it'll affect everything. So by changing that blend mode of that group to normal rather than pass through, now when I make the adjustments, it's only going to affect that. Okay, so let's just take a little bit down. Just drop the highlights a little bit. There we go. I kind of like that a little bit better anyway. All right, and let's do the background. Let's create another curves adjustment. And with this curves adjustment, because that's the bottom, it doesn't really matter. Let's lighten it up a little bit. So I'm going, that's the mid-tones there. We're going a little bit to the left of the shadows. Let's just open it up a touch. All right, let's see what we've got. If we turn off the black and white, I feel like, look at that, the tones are starting to match a lot better now. Great. Not worried about the color here, guys. Just worried about the tonality. Okay, it's looking good. Now, if we turn on our apes, we've got a little bit of work to do here. Let's go back to black and white. And why don't we start with, what do we got here? There's our front ape. I really feel like I'm going to hold the shift key. I'm going to turn off that selection. I just feel like I want to get a bit of selection on this one. So let's do select the mask. Will refine hair help or not? Sometimes refined hair will help, and sometimes it just creates a steaming pile of horrible. So I'm just going around with that refined brush, just trying to refine that fur a little bit better. So, you know, some of these tools like that are just great tools to try out. Um, you know, like refine hair, see if it works. And if it does, awesome. If it doesn't, then do manual work. So the auto tools are not always going to work. I think you guys have probably already figured that out, but they do a lot of the time. And if they don't get you all the way, they can just save you so much time. And that's what I'm looking for is just saving time. And in this case here, we've got colors. If we choose decontaminate colors, should get rid of those greens. Not bad. New layer flare mask, click OK. Yeah, there we go. Is it perfect? No, nope. but it's better than that. Well, whatever we had. So I'm not trying to get these perfect. I'm just trying to get them a little bit better. All right. So the next thing we want to do is with that ape, we want to mask out some of those areas. Like we want this bottle to be in front. So let's do that. Grab a brush. And then we're just painting. So a lot of this process is just literally just painting. You know, get some of that garbage there. Um, this stuff here should be over the top. And what I'm doing, I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to just paint all of this in. And then we can see what we've got here, what we want to keep, what we don't want to keep. And this is a time when I might cheat. Because I don't want to spend a ton of time on this. So what are we going to do? I have an idea. You'll see this happens a lot on, um, let's go for a soft edge brush. And we're just gonna fade it. You'll see this a lot on movie posters when they create these kind of fading effects. And a lot of it is, you know, it's cool looking sometimes, but sometimes it's just literally, you wanna finish the job and get paid. So see, it's just kind of fading. And then underneath, let's go back. And you're just kind of mashing it in here. So a lot of the time, this is just about getting it, you know, just getting it done. 
And so that's why you'll see those movie posters will do that. Actually, this could probably go in front. Whatever it is. All of that. There we go. And see what we're doing? We're just discovering harder edge brush is going to work better. Let's do that. Let's make the brush harder. So I'm holding down just, uh, you know, the, the control keys for this. That would be option right click and it would be control alt on Mac. And let's just try to get those edges a little bit better. See what we're doing here? Don't like that. I would probably do the sharp edge, but I think you guys get the idea. We're not going to get, there's no way we're going to get this perfect in the amount of time we have. But I just wanted to do a couple of these so you could see. Let's make it a little bigger and then we can start to fade that. There we go. Just fade it a little bit. Fading. There we go. Look at that. Just fading it. And see how, see what you can get away with when you start to fade things. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Starting to work. Uh, Silverback needs to be a tiny bit smaller. Yeah, he is a little large. I think you're right. Good, good suggestion. Let's make it a little smaller. And let's grab the brush in there once again. All right, so I'm just trying to just blend it in a little bit better. And we haven't added any shadows or anything like that yet. We'll get to that. All right, so I'm going to kind of accelerate this a little bit now. So what I want to do, see how we've got that nice fur cutouts better now. It's better on that one. I'd go through and refine it a little more, you know, with the brushes. And I am going to refine these myself on, on my own. But you see the process exactly how we did it. Okay, let's continue with getting everything to match. So let's grab our first ape here. There's our silverback. And we're going to grab curves. Now I want to clip that to the silver back and then we'll just call that SB so we know what it is. I'm going to option click so now that curves adjustment is only going to apply to that one ape. So watch this. If I do that, see it doesn't affect anything else. Let me drag off. Okay, so let's have a look and see what we can do. The shadows are a little dark on this image, but let's go there. Maybe I'm trying to lighten it too much there and let's go into the mids and the highlights. Just trying to get a better match. Now I'm just eyeballing it. Maybe I'm going to go too bright. Let's have a look. That's definitely fitting in better. All right. And notice when you get rid of the color, it just makes it so much easier. So control click on there will get me Mr. Bashful. And let's have a look at doing a curve. Let's do a curve adjustment. Option click to clip it just to that one. And I'm feeling like it's lighting it up a little. There we go, looking better. So I'm just going to tear through this one. We've got the little baby guy here, and I think he's too light. So let's do the same thing. Let's do curves. And then hold down the Alter the Option key. And let's give him a little bit of darken it just a little bit into the mids. There we go. I think that fits a little better. Then we've got these guys over here. So I'm going to go quickly and show you how to blend all this together. And once again, I'll go back later and I'll do any adjustments. Too much shadow there. Um, and I'm wondering, let me see, light direction might be wrong for those guys a little bit. I think with the light coming from the left, that should be going the other way. So we'll flip horizontal. Move into a better position. Now I'd have to do more masking here to kind of refine that. But let's get the curves. And let's see what we got here. Is it a little too dark? There we go. Looking better. Let's get the guy on top here. There's our curves there. We started doing the curves. Let's do a little bit more. Um, and if we want, I can just add a second set of curves. Let's just do a second set. Because if I start to push it too much, I might bend the curve and then create banding. 
So if you want to kind of get a couple of areas that are close to each other, it's a better idea to create two curves adjustment layers and drop them on top of each other. If you try to get two points too close, you start to get banding and posterization. So that's kind of how you can avoid that. All right, let's have a look at this. Overall, I think our tonality looks a lot better. Looking good. All right, so there's different things we can do with color. Now, I think one of the things I'm going to do is just to get things moving, I'm going to show you a little trick that I like to do. And obviously, you know, we haven't done all our, you know, shadows and all that stuff yet. But let me just create a new layer. And sometimes I just like to create a solid color adjustment layer, throw it on the top. And this can create a, sorry, that to color blend mode. And then what you're doing is you're just basically colorizing everything together. And notice as we do that, it just forces everything into the same sort of color space by applying it as an effect. See what we're doing there? And maybe we want to create something more. Let's just get some light rays going in here. Let's grab this. So I'm just kind of accelerating some of this just to kind of show you some of the things I might do. And we might put this across here and we want to create some kind of a lighting effect. So we put that into screen blending mode. Just start to bring it in. See what we're doing now is we're starting to bring this image together. And I haven't even done dodging and burning yet. All right, so let's do a curves adjustment across the top to give it an overall kind of a feel. Give it a little more shadow. There we go. See how now it's starting to come together, guys? Once again, you know, it's not perfect. But you can see how that's starting to, you know, have that effect. Okay, so now we want to do some dodging and burning. I'm just going to do this super fast. Once again, holding down the Alt or the Option key to create a new layer. We're going to throw this into overlay blending mode. And I'm going to call it Shad. Click OK. And this is where we would be adding our shadow. Now, I'm not going to, once again, I'm not going to finish this completely here. I just want to show you guys the process. And then I'm going to go in and do the fine refining. And don't forget, Bruce, could you post that link? And you guys will know exactly where you can do it yourself if you want to create yours. I'm just going to copy this and do H alpha highlight. And this is where you can start to match the lighting a little bit more. So I'm going to choose the shadow layer. Now, we could add shadows underneath, which we do need to do on some of these. Uh, let's create a layer. Let me duplicate that. Control J, and I'm going to drag this one down to the bottom. Put it above the background, and grab a brush. And this is where I'm just going to start to drop. I'm going to once again. I'm going to do this much faster than I normally would. I just want to kind of show you guys how it would work. Light directions come from the top left. Let's hide that. You know, we kind of get an idea of what's what we're going to do. And we may or may not use that, but now we know. And the light is coming from the left, which means we're going to get shadows on the right. So we could go in here. That's way too far. Let's take Shift 1. We'll give us 10% flow. Drop it down a little bit. I'm using a Wacom, so let's make sure we're using Transfer. Great. And I've got Pen Pressure. Actually, I'm using Flow. I'm going to keep the flow off. And then I'm going to use pen pressure for the opacity, which means that I'll let the flow just work by that 6% there. And then I can just start to paint in some of these. Well, maybe let's go higher. So then we'd want to go in here and paint some of the shadows, you know, where there's the grounding shadows in here, where this stuff is starting to hit. Just go much higher. I'm just going to take it all the way up. And, uh, you know, what am I doing here? It feels a little weird. Is it because of the blending mode I'm in? I might just put this into regular blending mode, just put it into normal for now, and just start to paint shadows. All right, so this is stuff, you know, that could take a while. So I'm just, once again, I'm going to do this super fast so you can see. So you would just start to add shadows, and we'll extend that runway later. It's pretty easy. You just cut it and drag it, duplicate it, clone it, whatever. And then, so we're just putting the shadows here on the ground. Let's be starting to do this. And then 
we'll get another layer of shadows over the top of that but I just want this to connect to the ground and I'm going a little too hard because we can bring the opacity down later all right so once you've done that you know you adjust the opacity you get that to kind of just match in a little bit you might do grounding shadow which is closer but then we're going to do another set of shadows let's collapse these down so you guys can see so now we've got the apes on top of the garbage so we want to create another shadow layer so i'm holding alter option i'm dragging the shadow layer here there we go and i'm going to put that between the apes and the tap and this is where you could start to um add the shadow you know from the apes would start to go into the garbage so this is where you start to you know just kind of tie all this together you know maybe a little bit of shadow would go behind him and i'm doing this in a blending mode and i'm you know once again I, this is hard to do this in such a short period of time just to do this quickly might not even work the blending mode i might just go just to normal yeah that shadow shouldn't be there it's, it's all right i just i think you guys get what i'm trying to do here like generally i would go in and i would start to paint the contours of all these edges see what i'm doing but for sake of time i just want to kind of show you that wouldn't get it there let's get rid of that um just dropping shadows in just to show you just quickly but you would follow the contours right now I'm just kind of throwing it in there but when I redo it I will follow those contours of those areas that would be getting it see like there it would follow there because the shadows don't just happen in space let me just hit the eraser and show you exactly what I mean Okay, so if we were doing the shadow, we would follow those areas. The tablet's sticking a little bit. Performance, probably the live stream. And see what I'm doing now is I'm starting to try to follow those contours of those areas around here. And this is not self-shadow. This is just a shadow that's falling on the objects around. So light's coming this way. You would get that. So those surfaces will start to receive the shadows. So I just did a little bit just to show you how it would work. And there's an eraser just to quickly um, show you that. And then you would bring the shadows down a little bit. You know, just get them to match. Then you would go in and now we would do the ape shadows. So literally what you would do now is you would go into these ape layers. And I, I would possibly create a shadow for each one. But I'm just going to drop one on top. And I'm just going to call this ape shadow just show you how it would work so with the brush here now i would drop the opacity the flow down quite low and then what you were doing is you would literally just paint around these apes let's just grab them i'm literally going to select that one let's grab his mask just control click on the mask and then we start to add shadow onto the side so now we're dodging and burning onto the ape because we know the light's coming from the left, we're going to get shadow on the right, and this is where we can start to match the shadows. See what we're doing here? Just kind of painting this quickly. Let me show. And then I'll show you, like, in a little bit, I'll give you a little bit of the before and after. So there's a little indent there. We'd get a little bit of shadow, maybe a little bit there. So it's up to you how detailed you want to go with the shadow. Let's hit that side of the face. It's in shadow great all right let's grab the next one so we're going to grab the guitar let's grab the guitar rape control click on there and then this side here is just all in shadow oh what did i do yeah make sure you go back to the shadow layer there we go and paint the shadow don't paint directly onto the layer paint into the shadow layer there we go and there would be a little shadow on that side and maybe even hitting the plane. I'm just doing this quickly so you guys can see. Let's grab that one. So this guy here. Control click on there. Select the ape shadow. And then we're putting that on the side. See what we're doing? And this is how you kind of start to blend them into the environment. So 
So what starts off as just a bunch of random pictures, now we're going in here and we're finessing them. And really, this is like one of my favorite parts. I really enjoy doing this. And I just, you know, get that there. It's kind of fun, so we're shaping it. See what we're doing? We're literally just, we're painting. And then we're just gonna control click on the next one. Just click on the mask. There we go. Grab the brush. I'm just gonna tear through this, as I said. Put a little shadow on the side. Maybe it's overly dramatic, but that's okay. That side of the leg would be getting more in shadow. So we see how we're shaping this and relighting the scene. So, you know, because if these are shot in different circumstances, you're never going to get the lighting to match. So you have to just go in and just do it yourself. A little bit on the side here. A little bit in there. See what we're doing. Get rid of that hot spot. All right, so see how now they're starting to match in the shadows. And then we might come back and, you know, we might drop the shadows down if it's too much. We can just use adjust the opacity. See that? And now we can move them all together. Because sometimes when we do this, it may lighten or darken other parts. We can also do this into the background. All right, so let's do the highlights. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this one highlight area for everything just to save time. And then we're just going to go through and do exactly what we did. Grab the guitar with the guitar. The guitar one brush and then we're just painting on this side this guy probably doesn't need a lot of highlights because it's already super contrasty let's do the silver back grab the brush and we're painting those highlights on this side now we could color these if we wanted how would i do that i would just paint it in and then to color it i would just you know apply a hue saturation adjustment if i wanted to do that or just drag it underneath those color layers see that and that will now apply a bit of that color and see what we're doing now is we're just picking up those highlights now so it looks like there's light hitting the other side let's go down so how are you guys enjoying this is this uh is this fun i know a lot of you guys got to get going um Let's just do a little bit more and then we'll wrap this up. Once again, Bruce, if you could post the link there where these guys can grab their, um, grab these assets. All right. All right. See what we're doing here. We're just kind of shaping that a little bit with the light. Let's grab the child. Grab that a little bit more. So this is a bit of a longer stream today, a lot longer stream than normal, guys. So this is just different. I figured we'd do a little bit of this, so at least you can, uh, you know, see the, how the process goes. And the more work we do, see how now it's starting to look realistic. So if it starts off. It does. Don't be, you know, put off if you're starting and it doesn't look very good. It doesn't look realistic. You know, at the start of the composite, just keep working on it. And then eventually, you know, you're just gonna start. It's gonna start to come together. What is this guy? So I'm looking for the. There we go. Let's get a little bit of highlights going on this chap. There we go. We're just kind of matching that. All right, control D. And as far as extending the ground, that's super easy. Just go into the background there and then just, I don't know, just cut, cut a section here. Control J and then just move it forward. See, a lot of the time, yeah, you don't have to get too fancy with that. I got more shadows and more highlights I kind of need to drop in there. And um, but as you can see, we're starting to get there. I could do some rim lights and some different things like that, which I might do later. 
Let me show you one other thing that I sometimes enjoy and let's create a little bit of atmosphere and let me show you how to do this. I'm just going to do it at the very, very top. I'm going to grab a cloud brush. Let me just grab a brush here. And I've got a set of cloud brushes. If you guys are already on the email, just go into the vault. If you guys are email subscribers, if you're not, go to photoshopcafe.com forward slash vault and you can download these brushes. And what I'm going to do is just add just a little atmosphere to just kind of give it a little something. So it doesn't look so, you know, like just see what we're doing. Just adding a little, little smoke here. And we can drag this down beneath the apes and everything. Let me just take this down below here. So you can put this just into the background. See that? Then I can create another one above the tabs. So this will add a little atmosphere on the tabs and stuff like that. See that? And then we can add another one above the apes at the very top. And let's make that a little smaller. And so what we're doing is essentially just creating some haze now. And I can do this into a kind of a gray color. So everything's just not looking so clean. Because it wouldn't be with all this garbage. All right, and so let's have a look. Looks like something's got a little bit weird here with the airplane. Was that with my brush? Did I get too carried away with that? What's going on here? Ah, that wing. So that wing that I cut out, I need to... Need to move that behind. It looks like it's sticking too far forward. And of course I'm covering it up with all of these. There it is. Okay, so that just needs to go back. You know what I need to do with that is I don't need it anywhere but in front of this bit here. So see what I'm doing? I'm just cleaning up. So now you're going to get to little bits that we're going to clean up. And then I'm going to do one thing that, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. I'm going to do one more thing, which I'll show you how to just kind of bring it together. So I'm just going to paint that in. Bring these up to 100. Zoom in. There we go. All right. So there we go. We got that little bit of that airplane wing that didn't quite get it. And that is looking weird because it should be taking the same adjustments as the background. So let's just take a curves adjustment. See what I'm doing? I'm just matching that. All right, and you could just kind of blend that in. That's good enough. All right, let's get our stuff going on top. Almost there, guys. Let's get some of this going. There's our highlights. Let's see what the highlights do. And if I want to put a little... There's another thing that might be kind of fun. Let me lose that for now. I'm going to put the black and white on top. Check this out. Sometimes you put the black and white on, and then I can play around with these tones. Watch this. If I go into color... Uh, into sorry luminosity mode watch this I can adjust the tone see that using the black and white to just kind of manipulate the tones under those areas so the areas in the greens or the blues I can lighten or darken see what we're doing and then we can see if we like that or not so there it is before and there it is after see how we can kind of lighten that up and it gives it kind of a cool kind of a look that's it that's another option if you don't like it so much just drag it in and just blend it in so i drop the opacity down on that all right so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to hold down everything and hit the e key so that shift command option e and that gives me one layer on top of everything on it and let's go into filter camera raw and what i'm going to do here is give this a camera raw adjustment this is very, very large. Let me bring it down a little bit. 
All right, so how are you guys holding up? You still with us? It looks like a lot of you are. All right. Looks like you guys enjoying this. Thank you. Add the Pink Floyd lettering now across the top. Hey, that would be awesome. Good, good idea. All right, so let's have a look. I'm going to take the temperature. I'm going to warm this up. Ooh, look at that. I could cool it or I could warm it. I'm going to give it a little warming. See how it just pulls it together? Uh, I'm going to bring the exposure down just a little. Drop the contrast down. I don't want this a high contrast piece. Playing around with the highlights. Let's look at the shadows. And see what we can do here. Just a little bit of blacks. No texture. Maybe punch the vibrance and then pull the saturation down. So move I like to do. And let's give us a little vignette around the outside. Kind of darken those edges a bit. There we go. Click OK. All right, so let's see if you guys like this. So before or after the camera raw adjustment. So let me know, what do you guys like better? Do you like the before, which is what we're looking at now, or the after, which is what we're looking at now? Let me know, before or after. Oh, Photomaker likes that there's odd numbers of primates. And, and actually, that's a good art rule, but I didn't do that on purpose. I wish I could take credit for that, but <laughs> I didn't. After, 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 but maybe pull it back a tad. Okay, good suggestion there, Photomaker. I like that. So let's do the after and just pull it back just a little bit. What do you guys think? About there? Let's go here. And that's essentially, you know, what we've built. Now, I've got to go through and clean this up a little bit. Obviously, I've got to do better masking down the bottom here by the uh, a bit of shadows and stuff like that. But I'm going to go through and, you know, I'll refine this a little bit before I send it off and submit it. So anyway, guys, that was um, an hour and a bit of compositing. I hope you guys enjoyed this. As you can see there, we literally went from the very beginning from concept, like not even having a concept, all the way through you know, a rough finished piece. Now, this would require probably another hour or two hours work to just kind of refine it, clean it up and get it looking really nice. But I wanted to just kind of rush ahead a little bit and like maybe just refine the edges on a couple of them instead of all of them so you guys could see the entire process. So everything that you would use to finish this piece, I've already shown you. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through on my own, uh, you know, refine the rest of this, get it how it should be and I'll post it on, I'll post it on our Facebook group I'll post post it on Instagram Twitter I'll put it everywhere and uh, at Photoshop cafe uh, so if you're on social media follow us at Photoshop cafe um, and in that way you can see the final result so anyway we're gonna be back next week with a regular um, uh, thank you for asking that question there uh, shift cool if I said your name wrong I apologize so every Thursday at 1 p.m. we here and we do these sessions live on YouTube that's 1 p.m. Pacific time on Photoshop cafe on YouTube join us for live from lockdown and all the replays are there on the channel on Photoshop cafe so check those out if you missed one um, all our replays are there this is our 76th episode Next week will be a regular episode where we'll take a topic, you know, we'll look at some of what you guys have posted this week. In fact, one of the things we'll do is when you guys create these composites um, of this uh, turn off the plastic tap, which is what this project's called, post them inside our Facebook group, tag us at Photoshop Cafe, and maybe next week we'll look at some of your guys' ones as well. I want to see what you guys can cover. I know Randy's going to create a killer one, much better than this. Randy's an amazing artist. So anyway, guys... Um, I think it's been fun. It's been fun this week. It's been good to see all you guys. And until next time, don't forget, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, um, hit that subscribe button and then that will let you know when we go live and also when I upload new videos. And like this, please. It helps us with the algorithm on YouTube. How many likes do we have here? Let's have a look. Are we doing well with the likes or not? 108 likes. Not bad, not bad. All right, guys. Till next time, I'll see you at the cafe and now I just got to figure out how to end it <laughs>